Hey everybody, I am Amanda, also known as Keto Ginger, and welcome to, or back to my channel, depending on if you're new here or not. I am 37 years old, I have lost 120 pounds on the keto diet, and I am in some kind of maintenance mode, is what we will call it. So if you are brand new to keto, still stick around because this will be valuable information. It's basically going to be what happens when you go off of keto. I've been eating a ketogenic diet for just over two years. And in that two year time span, I've had a week here, a week there where I've gone off keto completely and basically returned to the standard American diet. It's happened around Christmas and just recently with the impending hurricane, we took a week off from keto. So I wanna talk to you about how I felt why I did that <laughs> and basically how it made me feel physically and mentally and then I also want to tell you guys what I do to get back to business. So I want to talk about what I eat and drink and what the first few days of getting back into ketosis looks like for me and how I do that. You guys are going to come along for the ride with me so this is what we're doing. I can't wait to hear the comments of like gasp keto ginger ate cookies. <laughs> I'm sure there's gonna be some of that. Like, please don't shame me. Uh, the last thing I need is to feel shameful about decisions that I make regarding food. I don't do that to myself anymore, but I did for many years, and I hope that you don't either. We all make decisions in our life. That is one of the most beautiful things about being a human being and being a grown adult is that we're in charge over of every decision that we make and I was thinking about it this week and this is going to sound dramatic but I hope that you guys can relate. When the storm was coming right for us, and anyone that has ever dealt with hurricanes will understand this. There's this like few day window of impending doom where you have no idea if you're gonna get hit or not. And when it's like a category five, you sit there and you start to contemplate your life and your decisions because it really is a life-threatening situation hypothetically. So when that happens, naturally I panic. Anxiety is the biggest trigger for me when it comes to food. My whole life I ate my feelings. So if I was happy, I would eat. If I was celebrating, I would eat. Sad, mad, glad, whatever it is, I would eat for it. So that part of my psyche definitely comes back to me, especially when I feel scared or threatened or there's some kind of impending doom. That is my number one trigger. Celebration is the other, because <laughs> I love cake. That's the point I was gonna make, I'm rambling. So in those moments of impending doom when I'm sitting there and I'm gonna make a decision about if I'm going to go off plan or not, the reality is this, folks. If I knew that it was gonna be my last day on earth, I would not be looking through a keto cookbook. <laughs> I would want queso on tap and 19 tacos and margaritas with the really sugary sour mix and a wheelbarrow of funfetti. <laughs> so if I'm going to have like a last rites meal and I'm in a situation where I don't really know what's going to happen, not only do I not worry about keto, but I do forgive myself for comforting myself with food in those scenarios. Now, the flip side to that. It's not something that I wanna do with the rest of my life, okay? So it's triggering in the sense that a biological and chemical reaction happens in your body. When you go from eating keto to eating sugar and carbs, again, you have something happen where your brain is excited. It really does react like you're taking drugs or alcohol, consuming something where your brain is like, yes, give me more, give me more. So getting yourself to pony up and strap your boots on after a few days of being off plan and being like, we're going back to business, that's the hardest part. I'm a veteran of keto, so I'll be back in ketosis in a couple of days. I'm going to tell you exactly how I'll do that, but that's not why I made this video. What I wanted to talk about was a lot of the feelings that I had that came back and um, maybe it will prevent you from indulging when you don't need to. 
I'm not saying don't eat the cake. I'm not saying don't have the ice cream. If you have a bad day, you have a bad day. But I want to explain, I guess, like what happened to me. <laughs> this is dramatic. I never meant for it to come out this way. Ugh. One of the things that I noticed right away when I went back to eating how I ate in the past is that I felt like I could not get enough food. Okay, so when I'm cooking a delicious keto meal and I am in ketosis, I am not feeling the need to constantly eat while I am preparing that meal. But for whatever reason, when I am loaded with sugar and carbohydrates, I am so much more munchy. Like I found myself making a sandwich and I was eating a snack while I was making the sandwich and a light bulb went off to me and I was like, huh, this is another thing that you don't do when you're running on ketones. And I don't know if it's just a coincidence or my hunger signals just work better when I'm not loaded with sugar. It's probably that. I didn't gain as much weight as I expected to. The scale's only up like five pounds and some of that is probably water retention. I wouldn't say that I ate massive quantities, but I definitely ate sugar for a week. Now, if I kept eating like that, couple months from now I would probably put on I don't know 30 pounds maybe more so I'm not gonna focus on the pounds if you've been with me for a while you'll see that I don't really talk about numbers much and that's because the scale fluctuates so so much I think you know you could be down five pounds one day and then you think you gained a couple overnight it's just the number itself doesn't matter but how I feel Okay, so let's talk about how I physically feel. I feel tired. Normally my eyes pop open 10 minutes before my alarm even goes off and I am ready to jump out of bed, even if I've only had a handful of hours of sleep. But this past week, that has not been the case. I find myself hitting snooze, I'm like grouchy, I would really like to just sit on the couch and drink my coffee instead of being up running around doing what I normally do. So that was a huge point of difference. This is TMI and I won't go into detail, but my stomach definitely hurt. Your bowel movements change dramatically when you incorporate sugar back into your diet. Yes, I know this is gross, but it is what it is. Like I don't ever have trouble going to the bathroom when I'm keto. When I am eating sugar, I have trouble going to the bathroom. So that's another thing. <laughs> For me, mentally, I'm able to go off for a few days and go back on. It's not to say that it's easy for me to do that. I just know the value and the reward and how great I feel when I'm in ketosis. So for that reason, it's easy for me to get back. That's another reason why I wanted to make this video because I knew talking to you about it and kind of laying out the pros and cons, if you will, it reminds me why I've done this all along. And sometimes we all need a little kick in the pants. I need a kick in the pants all the time. <laughs> Someone, I wish I could remember who it was so I could give them proper credit, but I had asked on my Facebook uh, several weeks ago, what do you do when you're having trouble getting motivated? And someone said, one, two, three, go. <laughs> So basically, okay, I have this, I need to do it. One, two, three, go and get up and do it. I've been doing that more and it's super helpful. I know it's cheesy, but it's true. This is how I get motivated. Like, okay, we are going to wake up in the morning and we are going to eat low carb and we're gonna get back into ketosis and we're gonna feel awesome. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Did it work? Am I skinny yet? Did I lose the five pounds? This is what I'm gonna eat to get my life together. Now, my menu for the week will look something like this. It's really easy for me to tell you what I'm going to do for breakfast and lunch. Dinner will just kind of be, what am I cooking tonight? And those are some of the videos that you guys are going to see this week, like dinner preparation. So, getting back into ketosis, things are a little bit different for me. I do have a breakfast type meal. So for me, Every morning for the next week, my breakfast will be an awesome cup of Bulletproof coffee. It'll be eight to 10 ounces of black coffee, one scoop of preferred elements chocolate collagen, a tablespoon of half and half. I use half and half because I prefer it. You can use heavy cream if you want. And then I will also add a tablespoon of butter to that. It will be a supercharged Bulletproof coffee. That will be my breakfast. 
For lunch, I will do a salad and protein. So it'll look something like a couple cups of romaine with some tuna salad or chicken salad or grilled chicken or steak with salad dressing you get the idea. It's super important for me to keep my fats up these first couple of days or I will start to feel physically hungry. That's one of the side effects to reminding your body to run on ketones is all of those growly tummy pains do come back and I don't have those when I'm on keto. Then dinner will look something like a piece of steak and an indulgent side. So think a nice piece of steak and a nice serving of loaded cauliflower or fat kid broccoli or another giant house salad with like ranch and cheese and all of these filling fats. So that's what it will look like breakfast, lunch, and dinner for me for the next couple of weeks. I will mix up lunch sometimes and I'll want some uh, like fried eggs with cheese and maybe a slice of tomato, but for the next week, I will be very rigid of making sure that my fats are in place. You'll notice I didn't talk much about the carb count. Here's why. When I am getting back into ketosis, I know that if I go crazy trying to count my 20 net carbs, I might not be able to get my fat number to a place where I feel physically satisfied. So for those first couple of days, I will basically eat keto-friendly foods that are high in fat to my heart's content. Once I get back into ketosis, I might have to tweak a couple of things, but it's not likely. It takes me anywhere from two to three days to get back in. I'm probably going to be testing, so I'll have like a number and I'll know exactly when I'm in because I'm curious. So this is day one of back on keto after a break. Electrolytes will also be very important. I will be doing my periodic little drinks of pickle juice and I do take an electrolyte supplement. That is something that I have to make sure to incorporate. I don't usually get keto flu. Now, if I went off for an extended period of time, say a few weeks, and then tried to get back into ketosis, I would probably feel like crap and have some keto flu symptoms, but a few days isn't necessarily enough to take me out like that. At least I hope not. I guess we'll see. <laughs> have any of you ever done this? Like, sound off, comments down below. Those of you that have been doing keto for a long time, have you taken a whole week off for vacation or a holiday or anything like that? I'm curious to see what your tips and what your experience is with this. Two years time, this is probably the fourth time that I've gone off for more than just a meal or a day. I haven't done a sit down and talk video in such a long time. I love doing these because I, even though I'm sitting here <laughs> with my phone on a tripod, I do feel like you guys are here with me drinking coffee and just chit chatting. So to recap, if you go off keto, have a plan as to when you are going to start back. That's it. Pick a day. Today's the day I'm getting back to business and kick yourself in the ass and do it. That's what we're doing. Dan is probably miserable today. <laughs> I hate to laugh about it, but him and I both sat down last night and we knew today was pony up day. And we both said, you know, we sat there and listed our ailments and talked about so many things that weren't happening before. Like I have a giant pimple on my forehead. I feel like I'm getting a flare up of my skin condition that's been in remission for a long time. My stomach hurts. So we're both sitting there like going back and forth with all of these symptoms and we just look at each other and we're like, why do we do this to ourselves? We know how amazing we feel, but we also know that, you know, stress is brutal and sometimes we self-medicate with food just like we always did in the past. And I'm not going to beat myself up about that. You shouldn't either. It happens. Like, it's okay. We've had a lot going on the last few days, but I wanted to pop in and let you guys know, yes, I was a hurricane channel for several days there. It was very, very real. But I am back, and we're doing all things keto, and we're getting back into ketosis. We have a lot of amazing things for planned this month. I love you all so much. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing and sticking around with us and seeing some of our delicious fat kid keto food. That's what we do best. Have the best Friday ever. Have an amazing weekend and I will see you guys really soon.